Donald Trump has swept the opening contest for the Republican presidential nomination with a second straight statewide win in the New Hampshire primary after the Iowa caucus. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now, three. three. We win it every time. We win the primary, we win the generals, we've won it, and it's a very, very special place to me. It's very... Now, trends from the past 50 years reveal that whoever has won both Iowa and New Hampshire has eventually become the Republican presidential candidate. But Nikki Haley says the fight is far from over. She is still the last woman standing against a Trump versus Biden face-off that now seems inevitable. Assuming she remains in the race, the South Carolina primary due next month will be a must-win stop for Haley. After her defeat, she has continued with her argument about her chances in her home state. She says she has won tough races in her state before and knows it better than the political class and the media. Haley says voters in South Carolina don't want a coronation. They want an election. She added that voters are aversive to a Biden-Trump rematch, saying that the first, prime, that the first party to retire, its 80-year-old candidate, is going to win this election. But Trump appears to be looking forward to that showdown. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. And she doesn't win those. This is not your typical victory speech, but let's not have somebody take a victory when she had a very bad night. Now, what's significant here is that Trump's win in New Hampshire was bolstered by his strength across nearly every demographic group. According to the exit polls, he won in every age group. He won among both men and women, and he won among white and non-white voters. Now, with this sweeping victory, the path for a Trump versus Biden face-off seems clearer than ever. In the Democrats' camp, the incumbent president has close to an 80% majority as a right-in candidate. And the Biden campaign has reaffirmed that with this win, Trump has all but locked up the Republican nomination. But even though Haley's chances of winning this race are growing dimmer by the day, she might want to stick in the race just in case Trump's ongoing legal troubles bring in an unexpected twist. Now, some of his multiple indictments could carry a serious sentence and act as Haley's Trump card. In fact, Donald Trump's sexual assault defamation trial in New York is set to resume soon enough on Thursday. Well, for more on the New Hampshire primary results, correspondent Susan Tehrani sends us this report from New York. Listen in. New Hampshire delivered Donald Trump his first primary victory back in 2016, and now the former president has become the first candidate to win New Hampshire three times. He's also the first Republican candidate in almost 50 years to win both the Iowa caucuses and New Hampshire primaries. The last time that happened, was in 1976 with Gerald Ford. This victory turbocharges the Trump machine moving forward and has made MAGA America very happy. However, a group of Haley supporters and never Trumpers were happy to find out that the former UN ambassador is not dropping out. She says that she's looking forward to campaigning in her home state of South Carolina. That primary is at the end of February and Haley, which is trailing behind Donald Trump in her home state really risks facing punishing ads by the former president. Moving forward, the question remains, is it only a matter of time before Nikki Haley drops out or does she have a chance in this race moving forward? If you ask Trump supporters, all they want to do is make Donald Trump the nominee and focus on beating incumbent Joe Biden. Susan Tehrani reporting from New York for We On World Is One.